here's a shot of everything we needed to complete this task. Now the first thing definitely you're going to need is some nitrile gloves. It gets pretty messy inside there. And you're going to want to pick up some of these pads. And this one came with a little handle, which was nice uh, in parts. I used it. I used some of the pads just separate as well. So you need some of those. Definitely the degrease cleaner. We went with the Citra Safe. You also need a spray bottle with just some water. The Scott shop towels is a must as well. Regular paper towels are not going to get the task done. We also use the traditional wire brush just in the beginning. And I went ahead and I used stir sticks. I couldn't find my plastic putty knives, but these actually worked out quite well because I could just scrape and toss them as I needed. One thing though that's not in the shot is some red rosin paper I used to put on the ground. You'll need something like that or some plastic just to help protect the floor. And then lastly, you'll need a little shop vac to vacuum out the bottom of the barrel. Now this one I actually use dedicated just to using on my grills. Uh, it's something to keep in mind. You just don't want greasy material building up and then you go to use it on something else and it's a pain to empty. So here's our Traeger. Beforehand. Luckily, this down inside there has a foil over top. So we should be able to just pull that off, but we're going to clean all this off here. It's been a season of it. As you can see, even on the lid, it's pretty greasy on the handle. Also, right up in here, see a lot of grease drippings that come down. So we're going to try to get this whole thing cleaned up, prepped it, red rosin paper on the ground there to help in case any grease drips down, it won't get on this block and stain it. I'm going to try this citrus safe, a little scrub brush there, but beforehand we're going to go with a, just a regular wire brush and get it started. Okay, to get started we're going to remove some of the meat probes there and the temperature gauge that we have from our external one just be careful of the one that exists in there but we're going to take our wire brush i know it's a little old school but we want to knock all the pieces loose so that's why i flip the grate back over actually scrub the back side and i'll flip it back over to the front and now we can spray it with that cleaner now according to the instructions on the cleaner it wants you to spray it and leave it for at least a minute to soak in and start loosening the things up. But our grates were the worst area so I wanted just to hit that and really let it soak in. But now we're going to go from top to bottom so we're going to spray the lid and then don't forget your smokestack. There's a lot of buildup that happens in there so we're just going to want to soak that as well. Give a really good saturation spray of it and then set that aside and we'll come back to that a little bit. Now you want to put a little rag down on the top of your smoker here because um, as you're spraying that lid it's going to start dripping down. You don't want to make a huge mess on the outside of the smoker and make more cleaning for yourself. So all we did was we took some of those shop towels, fold them in half and then tucked them under and that did a really good job. Once again, we're just going to really hit this because this is, I mean, really coated in some grease. It's been sitting for a while. So we're going to let that sit there for a little bit. Now, I made the mistake. I came in with uh, a damp rag and I wiped it the first time, um, thinking that maybe it'll help get removed some of that stuff, which it did. But uh, my idea behind it was actually that I wouldn't go through those pads as much and you can see it actually did take quite a bit off but this is definitely not the route you want to go if this is the only thing you're going to do you're going to need to use one of those pads so we're going to go ahead and saturate it one more time and now we can come in here with the actual scrub pad and this is going to make a big difference while i was waiting though for it to soak i went ahead and i addressed that smokestack cap now you can see me really going to work and this is a huge difference. I mean you can literally see the difference in the video right there as I'm doing it. I mean it almost took it down back to that true copper look which is really surprising that it was coming this quickly in such a quick application. So now that we went ahead and we used the pad for the initial scrub down there, the next instruction is to use a damp rag to wipe down the surface. 
and it, it's going to take a few here as you can see as we're just kind of working off the grease as we can but just keep dampening rags and wiping down uh, i hit it one more time with the cleaner and it is looking very fresh and new now so i'm pleasantly pleased with that went ahead and just took my spray bottle of water after i was all done sprayed it down and wiped it off one more time but now that that's done the grades have had enough time sitting there with the solution on them so we're going to take that same pad and we're going to scrub down the whole grate now notice i did it inside my smoker below it has that drip tray and it has a piece of foil on it so all we're doing is actually scraping off that grate and it's dropping down onto the pan and it catches there and we can remove it later but before we get to that we want to address the top of the barrel of the actual traeger you can see it's really filthy in there so we're going to go ahead and just take some shop cloths wipe it down really quick and then we can come back with our spray and do the same thing we did on the top lid with that task finally complete we can remove the tray because pretty much all the debris material that's going to fall down onto it has been removed so I'm trying here to get my foil that I had wrapped around the tray off and I will tell you it's pretty stuck on there a little bit of grease must have dripped behind it and kind of stuck it looking back I would recommend just taking this whole tray out and then taking the foil out of it uh, off of it outside of the actual Traeger instead of trying to finagle it inside there you know I was trying to make less of a mess on my pavers and stuff like that but it was just becoming a hassle so we ended up having to remove it and then we could really get to that foil and discard that but we're going to move that drip tray to the side we'll address that later now we're going to go into the lower portion of the barrel just a quick little tip here i always double up on my nitro gloves because it gets quite messy but i can pull them off and i've got another set ready to go now that we're moving on to the bottom of the barrel we're going to get into pretty much one of the dirtiest places in this whole thing and that's where all the drippings go down to to drip out into our little basket outside and what i used was just some paint uh, stir sticks i had laying around i couldn't find my plastic putty knife these ended up working quite well and as they got messier i could just toss them and get a new one but after you're done hitting that you're going to want to hit the smokestack as well as that little tray around the edge but man i can't believe how much is actually in the stack itself i mean you can see all that debris but that's what we really want to remove and that's how clean i got it i mean the smokestack's ready to go able to put that lid right back and screw it right back into place and that portion is complete so now we can really get into that like sawdust material um, that kind of collects in the bottom here you're just going to want to grab your shop back and vacuum that all out i hit it first before i remove that uh, safety cover the heat cover off of the uh, hot box there so once i've got it pretty well vacuumed out i can remove that that way i'm not pulling all that and getting the dust all over myself Get as much of the loose stuff as I can, come back with a paint uh, stir stick, scrape the edges, knock all the uh, stuff that might be slightly stuck to the sides loose, and then we can come back with our shop vac and finish it up by cleaning up anything that we've loosened up here. Also, if you notice, I'm going to go ahead and soak down that area and really collects and where they drain out the drippings and let it sit there while I'm working on the rest of the barrel. That should help uh, me come back here and scrape off a little bit more. Like I said, that drip tray is going to be the messiest portion. So I soaked it again and I'm coming back and all I'm doing is pushing the any of the dirt and debris right down to the actual drip tray and I'm pushing it down into there and it's going to collect in that little basket and I can toss it away later. Just make sure you have your liners in there because it gets pretty nasty. But You can see the difference we've already made just by the quick vacuum and the clean and the scraping. This thing is uh, looking much and much better. So.
now that we got that all addressed, we can put the tray over top of the firebox there, and we can turn our attention now to that drip tray that we set aside. Now they do make a Traeger tray that goes over top of this. I just wrap it in foil, but you can see that the foil, you know, tears in some spots occasionally. Grease might slip behind it, and it's gotten to the actual tray, but it's not too difficult to clean because it's a nice flat surface. Once again though, we're just gonna go ahead and hit it with the solution, let it sit for a minute, come back with this pad, scrub it down, and then once we're done with this, we'll come back with that damp rag and then go ahead and wipe it down so it's nice and clean and ready to go. Now before putting this back in, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wrap it in foil again. And this will hopefully keep it uh, cleaner in the future. I'm gonna keep a better eye on it and replace this foil more often in going forward. Now, normally this is a pretty easy task, but I picked a nice windy day. So you can see where maybe that pre-made Traeger tray might be a little bit easier for you. Um, Cost-wise though, this foil is a much better option than that. But it's up to you. Once we're finished battling the wind though, and we got the drip tray all wrapped in foil, we can put that back into place. And now we can reinsert our grill grate as well. Once these two tasks are complete, now we can start turning our attention to the exterior of the Traeger. Now they do make a specific solution to clean the exterior of our uh, your Traeger or your grill. Uh, I didn't have it, so I went ahead and I was using the regular one for the inside. I'll leave a link to that exterior one uh, just below, but I didn't have a chance to get it myself. The interior one worked well. I just I wasn't able to let it sit long enough in certain portions of the Traeger where the drips kind of came from that lid area. I was having a little bit of difficulty there, but it did clean up well. I was able to clean up the handle of the basket as well too. Pretty clean. I mean, there's a little bit of grease in the back that I didn't really get, but as soon as I start using this thing again, it's going to be build, building back up, but at least I took care of it. That top really cleaned up though. All right, so right now we are pretty much done with this. It's pretty clean. Um, I need to kind of hit the outside a little bit better on this edge, um, but I got it refoiled inside there on that drip, tra uh, drip tray. Um, I got majority of the grease out. I didn't want to go like, I would love to have gotten it all out, but as soon as I go ahead and I smoke something else, it's going to start building up anyway. So I think I got a good base though to start with going into winter because once the snow hits, I'm not going to be able to really clean like I was able to today. I understand some people talk about treating their smokers as if they were cast iron uh, skillets and that that's seasoning in there and that's kind of what I was going for, but um, I was getting kind of nervous about a possible fire or something like that starting in there because of all that grease and that um, powdered, uh, pretty much sawdust almost inside there. Real key points though was definitely putting that paper down. Um, I actually even got some grease on the pavers here. Should have put a little bit more down, but um, I'll hit it with the power washer and clean that off. As for the cleaner, the Citra Safe worked really well. Now I'll tell you the application, you do need to hit it a couple of times if you're in a situation like me. And then I had pretty much neglected this thing from the day I got it, um, which was very early, uh, job out June of this year. And it is November right now and it's finally getting its first clean. So, um, so that's how much grease was built up in here. And we use this quite a bit, but you can see it made a huge difference, especially on that lid. Um, Grease had built up from the smoke and everything, and that's why I was getting this drip edge here, and I was getting drips down here as well. So hopefully that addresses it going into the winter. Another thing is I wish I would have had my plastic putty knife to clean, but uh, I ended up having a ton of stir sticks laying around, and that worked out pretty well because I could just scrape and toss rather than you know trying to keep uh, plastic constantly cleaned off. So it worked well for me. Um, we adapted when we needed, when we needed to. 
They actually make a specific one for the exterior. I don't have it. I went ahead and I tried to use this on there and um, it did okay. Uh, it did much better on the grill grates and inside and stuff like that. So um, I might try that on the next time I go ahead and clean that and I'll let you know how that goes. But everything we used in this video to, to get this cleaning project done, I'll leave links to the, in the description below. If you use those, it does help us out. So we really do appreciate it. If it's your first time here, think about subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you on board. Until next time, thanks for buzzing by.